Hey there, Nick Dernitakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to connect to a running Docker container as the root user. This could be very handy to do if you've set up your Docker file to run things as the non-root user, which is a really good idea from a security best practices point of view. I've gone into more details in the past in a recent DockerCon video. I'll leave a link to that one in the card. But let's say that you've got your Docker file all set up to run as a non-root user, but you just wanna sneak into your container and maybe install a code editor or a different package or maybe modify a root file. Thing is, when you exec into your container, you're gonna be the non-root user, and it's going to be a little bit weird to uh, run things as root. It may involve you having to go to your Docker file, like install the sudo command and set up all sorts of other things temporarily, only to rebuild and remove that stuff later. But in this video, we're gonna go over how to do it so quickly, so easily, you won't have to rebuild anything, no sudo required. So in the other TMUX tab here, I am running this project here, and uh, it is up and running, also available on GitHub. I'll leave a link to this one in the description. But it's all up and running. Let's say that we wanna to connect to this project here. I can do a Docker Compose exec web and then bash here. I am running a Debian based image, so bash is available. Web is the service name in the Docker Compose YAML file. And we're just going to exec into it using Docker Compose. Pretty standard stuff here. And that's gonna drop me into the container. But in this case, it is going to be set up as the Python user here because that's the user I have defined in my Docker file. I don't run things as the root user there. And uh, I did create a new Python user. So here we are. If I do who am I, that is going to be Python. If I do an, uh, an LSLA here in my home directory, we can see we are in the Python user's home directory. This is where all the packages are installed, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, if I try to just you know run something like sudo app get update or something like that, that is going to totally fail because I don't have sudo installed. Uh, it's just not going to work. But we can very, very easily just connect as the root user here just by rerunning the same command here, but we'll supply the dash u flag and then we'll just connect as the root user. And boom, there we are. We are now the root user. If I do who am I there, we can see I'm the root user. And again, if I do LSLA here in the root user's home directory, it is basically empty, just a couple of uh, shell configuration files here and that's it. So we successfully connected as the root user. Now we can just do an app get update or you know whatever commands that you wanna run here. We don't need sudo because we're already the root user. And uh, now you can go in here, modify some files, do whatever you need to do, test whatever you need, and you are good to go. You can even open up another terminal and do a uh, another connection here with exec, but this time maybe as the Python user for whatever reason. And now we are connected to our container twice once as the root user up top and down here as the Python user. That could be handy in some use cases potentially. Uh, in my case, I was doing this recently where I wanted to log in as the root user. I just wanted to modify a root file real quickly and just, uh, just test something. So yeah, I didn't want to have to modify the Docker file, rebuild, et cetera, like this was just so much easier. And uh, technically you can even switch over to the Python user from root just by running that there. Uh, although in this case, this is not going to put you into a bash prompt. It's going to be just regular POSIX compliant shell. So you're gonna you know, lose out some nice auto completion um, or tab complete types of things. Uh, technically though, you can, I think this will work if you just do shell and then bin bash and then boom, you switching over back to the Python user. Uh, you could do that instead of opening up a second terminal and just connecting as the Python user. I kind of prefer connecting to the second terminal as needed instead of switching back and forth because this switch here is kind of a one way street. So we switched back over from root to Python, but there is no just switching back over to the root user here. Uh, that's just not going to work here if we just try to uh, just switch over to the root user. Yeah, now it's like, well, you gotta put a password in, but what's the password? We're in Docker, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, if I find myself needing to switch in between the root user and Python user, I'll just open up two different uh, terminals and go at it like this. But usually just the root user is enough. But uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, since it is using a Debian-based image, I've never run into any issues here, just explicitly putting root here. But if you run into some issue like that, uh, you may wanna try just using zero instead of root. That's going to be the user ID instead of the username. This will do the same exact thing here. And uh, actually, if you just run the ID command here, we can see that the root user has an ID of zero. This is some pretty standard stuff on any Linux-based operating system, which is why I guess I've never had any issue just putting root there instead of zero. I mean, I guess technically if this were maybe running in some type of script, I'd probably use zero just to be a little bit more safe. But you know, these are all just like one-off things that you might be running on your dev box, in which case root to me is a little bit easier. Also, I just wanted to let you know real quick, uh, if you are using this project, you know, you can do a run shell here, which is uh, a shortcut to running Docker Compose exec web bash. It's going to do it as a regular Python user. I just wanted to let you know that is available as a shorthand in case you happen to be using this project or any of my other example Dockerized Flask apps. Also worth noting that 
Uh, this isn't limited to Docker Compose. If you're not using Compose and you just want to use regular Docker commands, that also works totally fine here. So if I do Docker container ls here, we can see all the, the list of running containers here. There's a Hello Flask web one. So we can just do uh, Docker container dash it user roots, pop in the container name as bash, and that should do it. Nope, it shouldn't do it. What did I mess up there? Uh, oh, I forgot the exact command. Duh. Uh, kind of nice when you should know the commands of these things. So we need to docker container exec, and then we are good to go. And oh yeah, <laughs> underscore one. Uh, I forgot about that one. So yeah, that'll do it for that one. Uh, we need to do the IT flags to have in interactive prompt here just so it doesn't immediately exit. And uh, yeah, I missed that other uh, underscore one here just because the font size is so big, but we can see here uh, somewhere in here that it does say hello flask web underscore one. I was actually looking at the image name there. So if, you know, if I were to bump down this font, then it becomes a little bit easier to understand how things are set up. But yeah, I mean, if you're working with Compose, just do the Compose command, right? But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, let me know in the comments below where you're going to be using this for. Also, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.